excited because today we have this delicious yummy vlogmas Christmas recipe that actually my brother has been doing for years it's kind of like a family thing that we love to do all together and today I have a special guest my broster just to show you guys and share with you guys this yummy delicious recipe it is a delicious scrumptious eggnog gingerbread trifle that we're gonna be showing you guys and I just thought it was a fun idea to do for Vlogmas. If you guys are new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel, tap the bell so you can be notified of all the new upcoming videos. Because we have a lot of free makeup, a lot of giveaways coming your way, and it's a lot of fun here at Kenny Beauty. So let's get into this yummy treat. All right, you guys, so this is my brother, my brister, and how's that coffee? It's good. It's Figured I'd get them some coffee to add some fuel to the fire. All right, so I don't remember what like the steps are as far as what, I don't remember exactly how we make this. Okay, so we have to do the gingerbread cake and then we have to do the eggnog pudding and then we do the whipped cream. Basically, we do uh, the cake, pudding, whipped cream, cake, pudding, whipped cream. And that makes up the trifle. And then you kind of, we just kind of mesh it all together. Um, well, no, it goes in those layers. Okay, okay, cool. So, what is the first step? So, the first step uh, is to bake the cake because while the cake is baking, we can work on the pudding. Alright, guys, so now we're gonna get ingredients ready to start out with the cake. Let's do it. Okay, so now on to the ingredients for a special recipe. So these are the ingredients for the gingerbread cake. And we've got two and a third cups of flour. We've got four teaspoons of ginger. We've got two and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. One and a half teaspoons of salt. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of allspice. We're gonna do one cup of sugar, one cup of molasses, two eggs, one cup of oil, and then we're gonna do one cup of boiling water. All right, let's get on to mixing. All right, so first we're gonna start with the dry ingredients uh, and mix those together, and then we'll do the wet ingredients. And so we're gonna start with uh, two and a third cups of flour. And now we're going to do the four teaspoons of ginger. It's stuck in there. <laughs> there we go. And the fourth. And now we're going to do two and a half teaspoons of baking soda. There's one, two, and now we're going to do some cinnamon. And that's going to be two teaspoons of cinnamon. There's one teaspoon. Here is two. And next we're going to do one and a half teaspoons of salt. And the last for the dry ingredients is going to be a half teaspoon of allspice. We're going to mix these together. Okay, now that we have this all mixed together, we're going to move on to our wet ingredients. Now we're going to do all the wet ingredients. Of course, I say wet, the sugar is obviously not wet, but we need to uh, cream that in there. So we're gonna start with our sugar, and this is one cup of sugar. Then we're going to pour in our dark molasses, one cup. And I didn't do it today, but I have a little trick for you. 
if you put your oil in the container first and then put your molasses in, this will pour out a lot smoother. Oh my gosh, I never even thought about doing that before. That's such a good like idea. I never even thought Little about that. Little hack here. Okay, and now we have one cup of vegetable oil. And then we have our two eggs. That egg was a twin. <laughs> and that's our wet ingredients, so I'm gonna pull the mixer out and we're gonna mix those together. And then we'll start combining our dry ingredients. So we have all the wet ingredients in our mixer. Um, and some of you might be wondering, what about that boiling water? So that's actually gonna happen after we get this mixed in and then we're gonna pour in the boiling water while we're mixing. So without further ado, here we go. Try not to, um, I like to keep it slow at first and then, you know, after it's nice and mixed together, speed it up a little bit. And then slow it down to pour in your boiling water because you don't want boiling water splashing everywhere. So here we go, we're gonna start pouring in the water. I'm not 100% sure the uh, science behind the boiling water. I think it's um, to really get all the ingredients melded together well. Um, and then I think the water kind of bakes out when you're baking it, making it a little fluffier. And once that's done mixing and you're happy, we're going to pour it into um, I'm going to do two 9 inch containers, um, one 9 by 6 and one 9 inch diameter. It doesn't really matter because we're going to end up cutting the cake into pieces after anyway. Um, and I always make enough to have a little extra to eat while you're, while you're making it. So we're almost done mixing and now we're just going to put in the dry ingredients, right? Yep, we're going to pour in the dry ingredients with the wet and uh, start making our batter. So I'm just gonna pour it in. Some people like to mix it in while it's going. It's it's really up to you. I, I you know some people swear by that, but I haven't found it to be that important. It's cleaner to do it this way. That's what I think. And now we're going to mix it. Start out a little slow, let it get mixed, and then we'll speed it up and you'll start to see a nice batter come together. That's looking good. Now we have to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And once that's up to temperature, we're gonna pour these into their uh, baking pans. So we're gonna do a nine inch diameter and a six by nine pan uh, to bake them in. Uh, it's really up to you because when we're done, we're going to cut the gingerbread cake into pieces for the trifles. So it doesn't have to be in any specific container. It could be in one big one or uh, smaller ones. Really up to you. Okay, so now we're going to make our eggnog pudding. Um, and here we have the ingredients for the eggnog pudding. Um, so to start off with, we've got how many cups of eggnog? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter eggnog. <laughs> we got two tablespoons of cornstarch. We got one quarter, one quarter teaspoon of salt. We got a third cup of sugar, and it doesn't look like it, but there's actually three egg yolks, one broke. And that's the ingredients. All right, so here we have a medium saucepan. 
we're going to put all of our ingredients in here. We're going to mix them together, and then we're going to put it on the stovetop um, and cook it on low heat at first until you get it nice and melded, and then we'll bring it up to medium heat. Um, and this can be anywhere from five to ten minutes. Um, you just want to really cook out and get the cornstarch mixed in so it thickens up to a nice pudding. So here we've got our egg yolks. It's three of them. We've got our two and a quarter cups of eggnog. Oh yeah. And this is really good thick creamy eggnog. I know we're not supposed to throw brand names out there, but Burn Dairy makes a good eggnog. You can edit that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Burn Dairy does have really good eggnog. We've got a quarter teaspoon of salt and a third cup of sugar. Because if the eggnog doesn't have enough sugar, right? Teaspoon down. And then we've got two tablespoons of cornstarch. Here we go, we're just gonna mix these together a bit. All right, I think we're ready to put this on the stove top. All right, we're gonna put this on the stove and you wanna constantly be stirring this while it thickens up. You don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pan. So you kinda just sit here and I mean you can leave it for a minute or two as long as it's on uh, medium or low heat um, but then keep coming back and stirring it so we're gonna check on our cakes and see if those are done now all right it looks like our cakes are done oh my gosh this smells so good yeah and um, we we did a little uh, test to make sure we took a little uh, stick put it in there and it was dry not wet so they were good we took them out let them cool down a little and now they're they're good to go okay so we took our pudding off of the stove what you're looking for is you want uh, the pudding to kind of uh, stick to the back of the spoon a little bit and once you see that uh, it's pretty much ready to cool so we're gonna put it into a container and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator and we're gonna let that cool for at least three hours although if you let it set overnight it's uh, gets a little thicker and a little bit better um, and then after we put that in the fridge we can uh, work on the whipped cream um, or you can do the whipped cream right before you make the trifle once the pudding is done cooling so that's what's next okay so we've uh, made our pudding and we let it cool in the refrigerator for three hours we've got our cake done uh, now the only thing left to do is to make the whipped cream cut the cake and put it in our trifle so now we're going to make our whipped cream. And we're gonna do homemade whipped cream. Of course, you could always buy whipped cream if you'd rather. But to do the homemade whipped cream, we've got some uh, heavy whipping cream, or heavy cream will work as well. Uh, so I'm gonna do three cups of heavy whipping cream. Here's one. And here's two. And it's gonna make a good amount of whipped cream. You don't have to use it all. Um, in fact, if you'd like to do two cups, if you don't like a lot of whipped cream, that's fine too. There's three cups. And you can whip it by hand, but it makes it a lot easier if you have a mixer to whip it. So we're gonna start by uh, starting to thicken it up before we add the sugar. Uh, today, we're gonna do a little almond extract. We're starting to see it thicken up a little bit here now. It's not quite ready for the extract. The deal with extracts is if you can use uh, an actual uh, vanilla uh, bean, it's a lot better because the extract has alcohol in it. And so you gotta be really careful not to do it too early. It'll mess up the chemistry. But now we're starting to see it thicken up. I'm gonna pour in a little bit of confectioner sugar. I'd say maybe a quarter to a half teaspoon of whatever extract you want to use. I'm not going to measure it, I'm just going to pour it in. 
And you can see it getting a little bit thicker now. Okay, so we've got all our ingredients here. We're going to put the gingerbread cake in the trifle container and we have this very pretty container here. Um, I cut the gingerbread cake um, and it may look a little messy, but I have a reason. I cut the outside edges to use the circular formation on the bottom. Uh, so we're going to put that in right now. Okay, so that's the first layer. We're going to pour in our pudding. Let's do a little bit of whipped cream. Alright you guys, so this is it. This is our final eggnog gingerbread trifle thanks to my brother and I am so excited to dive right into this and eat it all up. Doesn't it just look amazing and I love the trifle container. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, this family tradition of ours during the holidays and I will see you guys in my next video.